What up everyone, it's Kirtan Singh and I'm back with a brand new video. Today, I'm comparing the Season 8 of Game of Thrones with Avengers Endgame. Now, both of these franchises have come to an end in 2019 and whilst one is clearly worse than the other, I am going to hold myself back from ripping into Season 8 of Game of Thrones while I do this video. That said, I do have several different categories planned and then I'm going to award a point to whichever film or franchise wins that specific category. First up, characters. Both of these franchises have beloved characters. We have Jon Snow, Arya Stark, The Hound in Game of Thrones, and then you have Captain America, Iron Man, Thor, pretty much every character in Avengers Endgame is beloved by the fans. Even Hawkeye, who had only but a few minutes, I think less than 30 minutes or so, of screen time in the first Avengers movie, is one of the best characters in Avengers Endgame. And there's so many good moments of character development between both movies and, sorry, between Avengers Endgame and Season 8 of Game of Thrones, but ultimately the writing lets down Game of Thrones and elevates Avengers Endgame into taking this point from where you see Black Widow's character go from sacrificing herself for her friend's family and for the family of the Avengers finally being reunited to the arc of Thanos, Iron Man, Captain America being complete. That's one point to Avengers Endgame. The next category is cinematography slash visuals. Now both of these franchises have huge moments Clearly, the final battle in Avengers Endgame is a vital moment in the whole franchise and largely cinematic in its execution. It's the really one big fight scene in Avengers Endgame. And with Game of Thrones, you have all these major battles, especially in Season 8 itself, where you have the Siege of King's Landing and you have the Battle of Winterfell, not to mention previous battles that have come before it. But you have to take into consideration how Game of Thrones is a TV series. And considering that, it's hard to not give the point to Game of Thrones, seeing how beautiful some of the visuals can be, although in season eight there was the Battle of Winterfell, which was damn hard to see. There were some great moments of visual storytelling in that moment. And that's not to say that there aren't moments like that in Avengers Endgame, it's just that because Game of Thrones does it on a TV budget, it's much more respectable it's much more surprising and much more and something that you can really give praise to even more congratulated on so regarding cinematography and visuals i'm going to give it to game of thrones next we have story so both of these movies franchises tv shows they're bringing an end to an epic story which fans have been watching for at one for Endgame, it's been 10 years, more, more than 10 years, 11 years, and then for Game of Thrones, it's been 9 years. Especially considering Game of Thrones took a break last year, it's been 2 years that we've been waiting for this season to come out and for this story to conclude. With Avengers Endgame coming only 1 year after Avengers Infinity War, there was less time to just be worrying about the story, but that doesn't mean you were worrying less about what was going to happen. The writers across both franchises did their best, uh, except for Game of Thrones, D.B. Weiss and David Van Aff, but they tried their best, I'll say, to really get, encapsulate that moment where this franchise has come to an end. While one is clearly failing compared to the other, it's obvious that Avengers Endgame was better written and really did its best to serve fans as well as the characters in the story to create a enthralling storyline with major plot points, with major moments and character development which brings a satisfying conclusion to many, if not all, of the storylines that it required to bring to a close. So that's why Avengers Endgame gets this point. Next up, we have acting. Now, both franchises are filled with strong performances. While Amelia Clarke has him in the best actress in Game of Thrones, season eight was an opportunity for her to show off her skills and that she did. I believe she's the best actress in Game of Thrones season eight. And it's really good to see her have that range and to show off her skills. That said, Avengers Endgame has some brilliant moments of acting. 
You have Tony Stark, Robert Downey Jr., who's amazing throughout the whole movie. But I have to say, Scarlett Johansson's Black Widow is amazing in this movie. That moment where she's eating that sandwich and she's crying, it's so powerful and so well acted, I cannot fault it. It's so hard to really divide these two franchises on terms of their acting. These actors are those characters, so it's so hard to differentiate between them. While I do believe Avengers Endgame is slightly above Game of Thrones, I, I don't know if one day I could just switch and say, no, Game of Thrones had better acting overall. And it's good to remember that a lot of these actors, you know, on a TV show budget, they're really different to actors who are in movies and such. So for the sake of this, I'm going to give them both a point each. And for acting, I'm going to say it's a tie. Now we have a point for the least amount of SJW moments. Ah, no, I'm just kidding. We're not going to go into that territory right now. Seriously, though, we're going to talk about music. So there are brilliant scores between Season 8 and Avengers Endgame. Ramin Juwandi, I'm probably messing up that name major. Um, he did an amazing job with Season 8 of Game of Thrones, but Alan Silvestri really brought his A-game to the final Avengers movie within the Infinity Saga. And while the Avengers theme is still amazing, Tony Stark's Death Funeral theme is amazing, the Portals theme, theme is just wow, so good, I don't think anyone can hate that theme, especially considering the scene it goes with. I have to give this point to Game of Thrones, because the music is on point. It is one of the best aspects of Game of Thrones season 8 along with the visual storytelling, the cinematography. The whole production team behind season 8 of Game of Thrones really went above and beyond, especially considering how poor the writing was. Maybe that helps elevate these other aspects of Game of Thrones even more, but nonetheless, I'm going to congratulate Ramin on you know his amazing score in Game of Thrones. So regarding music, Game of Thrones Season 8 gets the point. Finally, we're going to talk about the directing of the two final installments in these beloved franchises. So you have three directors who took on the reins of Game of Thrones Season 8, and while each of them served their purposes, sorry, I should say three groups of directors considering the final episode was directed by two people, these each of these directors really played their part in serving the story. You had one, I can't remember their names, but one was really good with the big battles, the other one was brilliant in those small minor moments, and the other two were just terrible writers who tried to direct the final episode. But anyway, each of them served a purpose, and while many of the directions made it in this franchise, in this season, I should say, are pretty good, I don't think it really holds up to the directions by the Russo brothers in Endgame. This storytelling that they've started since The Winter Soldier, along with the writers Stephen McFilly and Christopher Marcus. Pretty sure that's their names, might have got mixed up. But nonetheless, the story that they've started since then has come full circle and they've laid out groundwork for more stories to tell. And that the way that they've gone about it is more powerful and it resonates more with fans and critics in a satisfying way. And it doesn't really do damage to the character. So the way that the film goes about executing many, if not all, of its story points, character moments, and developments is much more better in direction compared to Game of Thrones Season 8. So Avengers Endgame will get this point as well. So let's count up the final points for Avengers Endgame and Game of Thrones. So they both tied for one point each with their acting. So we got one point for Endgame and one point for Game of Thrones. But then we gave them two points to Game of Thrones for their cinematography and visuals along with the music because they were both amazing except the darkness of one episode, they were amazing throughout the whole season. But that means that we gave three other points to Avengers Endgame for characters, writing and directing. So with that all said and done, we have Avengers Endgame beating Game of Thrones with 4 points to 3. Whew, that brings it close to two major franchises within this year and we still have the Skywalker Saga to bring to a close once again technically at December this year. So while well, I look forward to doing this again, comparing Avengers Endgame 
Game of Thrones with the Skywalker Saga. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to my channel for more videos, and I'll catch you all next time.